So great to be in the presence of God. I hasten and take our attention to the Word of God. I take our attention to Job uh, chapter 37, and I would encourage you to remain responsive to the presence of God and what you feel. Because at any moment that you need God to touch your life, any moment you respond, when you're in the presence of God, the miraculous is possible. And I know there's many needs that are in the sanctuary. I know that there's many situations, many things that you would like to be delivered from. And I believe God is able to deliver us from all of our trouble. And the psalmist said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I believe in this hour the enemy is trying to intimidate the church, and we are literally in a spiritual battle. And as we were worshiping there, I felt that there, there was a breakthrough. If we would just kept worshiping and kept praising our God, there's a breakthrough that comes with worship. So I take our attention to Job chapter 37, verse number 10. And the writer here, he's writing about God's work and also God's wisdom. God's work and also his wisdom. And in verse number 10, out of the New King James Version, the writer of Job chapter 37 writes this, By the breath of God ice is given, and the broad waters are frozen. Also with moisture he saturates the thick clouds. Somebody shout clouds. clouds. And he scatters his bright clouds. Somebody shout clouds. clouds. And they swirl about, being turned by his guidance that they may do whatever he commands them, and on the face of the whole earth he causes it to come, whether for correction or for his land or for his mercy. Listen to this, O Job. And I encourage the congregation to listen to the words of God. Listen to this, O Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. I feel a pause in my spirit, just a pause there, and could we just consider the wondrous works of God for a moment? Could you reflect back on what God has done in your life and just, could you consider the wondrous works of God? Verse 15, do you know when God dispatches them and causes the light of his cloud to shine? Verse 16, do you know how the clouds are balanced? Those wondrous works of him who is perfect in knowledge. I feel to preach on this thought, this subject. Without clouds, there is no rainbow. Without clouds, there is no rainbow. Would you put your Bible down, lift up your hands and ask God to have his way in this service. Yes, God, you see every storm. You see every cloud. You see every situation that is dark. But without clouds, there is no rainbow. Without clouds, there is no promise. Without your presence, there is no power. Oh, hallelujah. If you're in the middle of a storm right now, you can lift up your voice to God and he can deliver you right now. Yes. Praise God. You may be seated. Oh, hallelujah. You see, clouds, they play a fundamental role in maintaining the balance of Earth's energy. Meteorologists and scientists, they look at this phenomenon, they call it Radiation balance. In short, this is the amount of radiation that enters and leaves the earth. And when we begin to study clouds, we would discover that this process is known as shortwave cooling, in which clouds reflect some of the sun's radiation back into space or back into the outer space. 
And this has a net cooling effect on the earth's surface and the atmospheric system, and even it has a profound effect on the climate. And at the same time, clouds, they help maintain and contain the radiation that enters into the atmosphere. And when it enters into the atmosphere, the clouds keep that radiation within the earth, and that warms the earth, and this is called long-wave warming, which it produces a net warming effect, and it controls the climate. And scientists tell us that there is a delicate balance between clouds. And this was discovered in the last 100 years. And if they would have just read their Bible, they would understand that God indeed, he balances the clouds. And until recently, scientists were uncertain whether clouds had an overall net cooling effect on the climate and on the earth's atmosphere. But as they begin to study the atmosphere, they discover that clouds play a key role in keeping a precarious balance in our climate. Can I say it this way? In other words, the creator of heaven and earth, he hung the clouds and he deliberately and he delicately balances the clouds. In other words, he allows just enough radiation to enter into the atmosphere. And he allows just enough radiation to exit the atmosphere if there was too much radiation this planet it would catch on a fire can I say it this way when I begin to consider this wondrous work I am reminded that God is our provider and he is our protector he gives us light but he gives us protection I'm thankful that God balances the clouds he's not going to let the sun destroy you he's not going to let the radiation destroy your life and if he does that with the natural he'll do that with the spiritual he's not going to let the enemy destroy your life he's not going to let the enemy come in and begin to destroy what he has created There's a delicate balance between clouds. You see, our Creator, He understood this, and that's why He balances the clouds. And if there was no clouds, if there was no rain, if there was no storm, there would be no rainbow. If there was no hardship, there would be no victory. If there was no sickness, there would be no healing. If there was no heartache, there would be no peace and love and compassion. But we see all these things came into the atmosphere and came into the earth because man fell in the garden. But when they fell, God gave them a way and a deliverance and gave them a promise. And because of sin and because of calamity, we see that God gave man a promise. And I'm thankful to day that we can trust in the word of God and we can claim the promises of God. So from the beginning of time, we discover that God reveals himself in the firmament of the heavens. And if we were to look back to the Garden of Eden, we would discover that there was a perfect balance in the Garden of Eden. There was a perfect balance and many theologians, they believe that prior to the flood, there was no rain. And I'm not here to prove that or disprove that this morning. But there's many scriptures that point to the fact that there was no rain prior to the flood. But theologians believe that it was a perfect environment. And there was a vapor canopy that existed prior to the flood. And it affected the climate. There was no need for rain. But the, the Lord, he began to water the garden through the mist and the rivers and the streams and he watered the earth that way and when we begin to study the word of God we see that sin came into the world by the fall of Adam and because of that we now have disaster we now have calamity we now have natural disasters and even devastation and because of that we see that God he sent not only his judgment but he also sent his mercy to this earth and because of that mercy because of that calamity because of storms we now have a promise and after a rainy day you can look up in the sky and because of those clouds you can see a promise that God will never leave us nor forsake us you have a promise that no matter how strong the storm is you have a way out has God ever brought you out of a storm could you just consider the wondrous works of God? Could you thank him for a moment if he's ever brought you out of a storm? Could you thank God for a moment that he gives you a promise? Yeah. 
Because without clouds, there would be no rainbow. Consider Genesis chapter 7, verse number 11. It says this, in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, in the 17th day of the month, in the same day, were all the fountains of the great deep broken open and the windows of heaven, they were opened. In other words, God began to open the windows of heaven. He began to balance the clouds. And because of that balance, because it was disrupted, he sent rain upon the earth. And he not only sent rain, but he broke up in the fountains of the deep and he sent that to judge the earth but after that judgment after the earth was flooded he sent a promise he sent a promise to mankind that he would never destroy the earth again by a flood but he said one day he's going to destroy the earth with fire I don't know about climate control or climate uh, uh, change. But one thing I do know is that God, one day he will fulfill his promise and this earth will be destroyed by fire. But you don't have to worry about that. If you have a covering, if you have the blood of Jesus, if you have the Spirit of God in your life, you will not be destroyed. You will not be destroyed. Why? Because he gives us a promise. And when we look up into the heavens and we look up into the clouds after a rainy day, we can see that God gives us a promise. And how do we receive that promise? We need to have the characteristic or the attributes as a Noah. Look at Noah's life in Genesis chapter 6, verse number 9. We see some of the attributes of Noah. And this one paragraph or this one sentence or verse, it begins to describe to us the life of Noah. In verse number 9 out of the New Living Translation, it renders that verse this way. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man. If you want the promises of God in your life to be fulfilled, you need to be righteous in the eyes of God. The only blameless person living on earth at the time. And he walked in close fellowship with God. Notice there's two words that describe from this verse. There's two words that describe Noah. Righteous and blameless. None of us, we are not righteous here today. The only way that we're made righteous is by the blood of Jesus, by the promise of his fulfillment and his salvation. None of us are blameless, but because of the blood of Jesus, we can have our sin removed from our life. What does righteousness mean? Righteousness means to be pure in the heart in God's sight. Notice what else is said in this scripture about Noah, that he was blameless. He was a man who walked with God. What does it mean to walk with God? To walk with God does not mean that we just physically are beside God or that we physically acknowledge God, but rather we are aware of his ever abiding presence. That's why when we were worshiping here this morning, we were aware of his presence, the Shekinah cloud the glory of God begin to rest upon the sanctuary and when we become aware of his presence we can receive the promises of his word how do we walk with God we begin to obey his word we begin to be sensitive to the voice of God we begin to listen to the voice of God just as Noah did Noah was obviously listening to God because God told him you need to build an ark and it's going to be to the saving of your family he not only built an ark but he began to herald the gospel as it were in the Old Testament and he began to encourage everybody to come into the ark and everyone that entered into the ark that they were saved but unfortunately the world they begin to reject the word of God and they were destroyed by the flood they didn't listen to the voice of God they weren't sensitive to the presence of God and the only individuals that entered into the ark was Noah's family I pause there to appeal to every man and every woman every mother and every father you need to begin to pour the word of God into your family 
What does it profit the man if he would gain the whole world but lose his own soul? Sometimes the only people that you can save is your family. You need to pray for your family. You need to war for your family. Oh, hallelujah. Could you war for your family for just a moment? Could you lift up your hands and say, God, help me save my family? Oh, hallelujah. Could you pray and say, God, help me save my family? Oh, hallelujah. Mother and father, your daughter, your son is depending upon you to bring them to the house of God. They're depending on you to pray over their life. They're depending on you to read the word of God to them. They're depending on you to proclaim the promises of God's word. You see, the Bible says that God's promises, they will be fulfilled in the life of a believer who is righteous, who is blameless, and who walks closely with God. You see, the promises of God to bless his people are to those that listen to his voice and walk in his ways. And when we walk in his ways, we will discover that his presence is so near to us. We begin to discover this throughout the word of God. And we see it even in the demonstration and the balancing of the clouds. And as we look up, we're reminded of that promise. And without clouds, there is no rainbow. Can I say it this way? Without God's presence, there is no promise. Promise. So throughout the scriptures, clouds are used to symbolize the presence of God. For God led the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the wilderness by means of a pillar of cloud. When the Lord brought his people out of Egypt into Exodus, he led them out through the wilderness for 40 years by means of a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And with the cloud, the Lord was promising his people that he would be with them. It symbolized his presence, but it also symbolized his protection. Even in creation, we see the balancing of the clouds. He lets a certain amount of radiation in, and the clouds let a certain amount of radiation now why it's not only giving you life but it's also protecting you from its destructive forces the cloudy pillar shielded God's people from the blistering sun in the wilderness at times it kept them hidden from the sight of their enemies additionally the cloud of God it represented his protection and his provision the cloud of God's presence served to teach them that God would lead them by the way that they did not know at times it shielded them from the evil it shielded them from the enemy and sometimes though they did not know the direction they were to take but as a born again believer as a child of God we don't always have to see where we're going we just need to trust God fully why we walk by faith and not by sight you may not know the direction to take here this morning And the cloud of God is hovering over your life. It's shielding you from some evil. And because of that cloud, you don't know the direction to take. But if you will trust God, if you will listen to his voice, he will give you clarity this morning. And he will direct your path. The steps of a good man, they are ordered of the Lord. If you're thankful for God directing your path, would you give him some praise here this morning? But if there was no clouds, there would be no rainbow. If there wasn't God's presence, there would be no promise. You see, Moses explained it to the children of Israel this way in Exodus chapter 13, verse 21. He said, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them a light. Somebody shout light. To go by day and by night you see the people could not see through the pillar of cloud they would have to trust God fully and believe that his presence was sufficient to lead them to the place that he was taking them 
So when you are righteous and when you are blameless and when you walk closely with God, you will receive the promises of God in your life and he will lead you to redemption. Just like he led the children of Israel to redemption, he began to direct them. He led them into the promised land. I believe there's many promises here today. They haven't come to pass in your life, but if you'll keep walking, if you'll keep trusting, if you'll keep following God, God, you will receive the promises of God's word. Oh, if you believe that, clap your hands under the Lord. For without a cloud, there would be no rainbow. You see, when Noah's family... When the flood began to rescind and Noah's family stepped off the ark, the Lord brought them through that devastation, that flood, the judgment of God. As soon as they stepped off the ark, they looked up into the sky, and out of the cloud, there was a rainbow in the clouds. It was a visible reminder of the covenant mercy that he promised in preparation of his coming redemption. That was the first place that we see the rainbow in the Word of God. It was after calamity. It was after a storm. It was after judgment. But it also reminded and gave you and I a promise that God would be merciful to those that are righteous, blameless, and walk closely with Him. But the last place that we see clouds playing a significant role in the redempted history of mankind is when Jesus ascended into heaven. And after the death, burial, and after his resurrection, Jesus took his disciples up on a high mountain, and the cloud of God began to descend upon them. Just as it descended on the mountain of transfiguration, a cloud descended upon that mountain, and it represented the presence of God. In Acts chapter 1, verse number 9, the writer of Acts says this, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. You see, Jesus' ascension in the clouds, it was foretold by the prophet Daniel. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 13, Daniel wrote this vision. He said, I saw in the night visions, and behold... One like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Oh, hallelujah. I'm thankful that the promises of God that we have, He's going to establish a kingdom that will never be destroyed again. Oh, I'm thankful for the promises of the Word of God. If you're thankful, give God some praise for His promise. Turn to somebody and say, without clouds, there would be no rainbow. Without stormy days, without challenging days, there would be no joy. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You may be sick in your body here today, but there's healing. There's promise of God's power. You may be broken hearted, but there's a promise that God will mend your broken heart. You may be depressed, but there's a promise that joy is coming. We're surrounded by God. For without clouds, there is no rainbow. And without God's presence, there is no promise. You see, physically, a rainbow needs three things. A rainbow needs light, a rainbow needs clouds, and a rainbow needs water. It needs raindrops to produce. Physically, these are the three elements that are needed to produce a rainbow. Light, clouds, and raindrops. 
Spiritually, though, there's three things that you need in your life to produce the promise of God in your life. You need light, which is truth, which is his word. His word brings light. But you also need water in your life. But you also need the presence of God. These are the three elements that we see in the beginning of creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form. And it was void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. But the Spirit of God began to move upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light light. You see his word, you see light, and you see his presence. I'm here to tell somebody today that all three are here. You have his word, you have his light, you have his presence, and you have his spirit. And if you have those three things, God will begin to give your life form. You see, the earth was without form and it was void. Some of you, you feel broken here today. And you don't know how your life is going to be put back together again. You need to trust the promises of God's word. You need to trust that he's going to give you form. He's going to give you meaning. He's going to give you purpose. Why? He has promised in his word. If you will trust in him, he will begin to form your life. We need to comfort one another with the promises of God. We need to comfort one another and encourage one another that no matter what we face, no matter what storm we're in, there is a promise, there is a rainbow, there is a reassurance that God will be with us. The Apostle Paul, he wrote to the church and encouraged the church And one of the ways that we believers, we comfort one another in this life is this. While we wait for a full revelation of the promise of God, we are to remind each other of the soon coming of Jesus Christ. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 17, it says this. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Without clouds there would be no rainbow. Without God's presence there would be no promise. Without his word there would be no redemption. Without his spirit we would not be raptured but one day God is coming back for a righteous church. A blameless church. A church that walks with Him. Oh, if you want to be called up in that day, would you give God some praise? (laughs) If there was no clouds, there would be no rainbow. One day He's coming back for the church. You may be depressed, you may be worried, you may be fearful about tomorrow, but don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. You have a promise that God's going to give you a kingdom that will never be destroyed. Some of you, you face grief. If you never face grief, you would never know the joys of life. If you never went through sorrow, you would never know the joys of joy. If you never know pain, you would never know the joys of being delivered and having the peace of God. If you never went through a storm, you would never understand the promise that God would give you perfect peace. A peace that passeth understanding. I know that the church has been through a lot this last year, and the enemy has attempted to attack the church. He's even attacked the mind of many believers. He's beginning to attack you in your emotions. He's attacked you physically. He's attacked you emotionally. He's tried to destroy your life. And there's been clouds all around you. But trust me, if there was no clouds, there would be no promise here today. Oh, hallelujah. One day he's coming back. He's going to come in the clouds. Oh, hallelujah. 
How do you participate in that redemption plan of salvation? One of the ways that we can have the promises of God is found in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. You need all three elements to receive the promise of God. You need light, you need His Word, you need water, and you need His presence. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see, when God created the earth... He said, let there be light, and there was light. Why? Nature had to obey the Word of God. But God gives you and I a choice. He gives us a choice to obey the Word of God. So when we hear the Word of God, we need to be obedient to the Word of God, and we need to respond to His light. How do we do that again? We repent, we're baptized in the name of Jesus, there's water, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Ghost? That is his presence. That's representative of his spirit. And when he fills you with his spirit, that's when you can receive the promise of the Holy Ghost. If you've ever received the promise of the Holy Ghost, would you just thank God that you've received his presence? Oh, hallelujah. If the musicians would come. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. You see, without clouds, there is no rainbow. And I pray that as you look up in the clouds after a stormy day, you'll remember this message and you will remember the promises of God. And that you will be reminded that in order to make heaven, in order to not be caught up in the judgment, the coming judgment of this world, God is not going to destroy this earth by water, but he's going to destroy it by fire. You need the promise. You need the covering. You need the presence of God in your life. And if you have the presence of God in your life, one day you will once again see a rainbow. But when you see an eternal rainbow, the next time you see it is going to be when you stand before the throne of God. For in Revelation chapter 4, verse number 3, John the Revelator said this, And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. You see how fitting it is that when we stand before the throne of God and we begin to worship, we're going to see a rainbow that reminds us of His eternal mercy and His eternal covenant with the believer. And he puts his bow in the clouds as to say that his majestic glory will transcend the time. And if we put our faith and our trust in him, he will be our eternal reward. One day, we're going to see God for who he is. We're going to see him sitting on a throne. We're going to see him robed with all glory and dominion and power. Oh, how many wants to make heaven your home? Would you stand to your feet, lift up your hands, and would you pray and say, God, I want to see your glory. Hallelujah. One day God is coming back for a righteous, a glorious church that walks with him. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, there's an undeniable presence of God here. God, I have confidence in your word. I have confidence in the promise of your word. You see every individual that is going through dark days. You see those that they don't know what direction to go, God. They feel surrounded by the enemy. But I pray that you would remind us once again that you surround us by your presence, by the cloud of your glory. 
Help us to remember, God, Lord, that without clouds there would be no promise, there would be no rainbow. Lord, you see those that are weary. You see those that are fighting fatigue, God, spiritually and physically. I pray that we would not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint, God. You see those that are weeping, and it's a night for them. But God, glory and your radiance and joy comes in the morning. You see every sickness, every disease, but I believe in the promise of your healing. I pray that you would heal every individual. For by your stripes we are healed. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon you. And with your stripes we are healed. If you need healing in some way, and if you would like the promises of God fulfilled in your life, would you just lift up your hands once again and pray to God and ask God to fulfill His promise.